Okay, we finally made it to the rest area. You look pretty tired. You want to sit down and take a break for a little bit? Let's stop and rest a bit. Random pictures. Whew! Walking all over the place like that can really take it out of you. Glad we can get off our feet for a minute, then. For the moment, at least, Grand Cell seems like it's genuinely at peace. You really think so? I'm just glad that we can leave it all up to Dad and everyone else, at least for today. Of course, I really think it should be his responsibility to begin with, since he showed up so late and arrested a cowboy. <laughs> yeah, I suppose so. Maybe it's just part of his nature. Ah, uh, oh well. It's not like we can do anything about it. But check us out, we're actually full bracers now. Which means we're not beholden to any specific branch and can go wherever we want. Even to Beaver City. Anytime a branch is short-handed and requests help, we'll just take an airliner to get there. But our newfound freedom will also mean greater responsibilities. Sure, but I think we'll be able to handle it. I mean, hey, we actually played a major part in stopping a coup. And it means I'll never have to hear Dad going on about how it worries him when you're not around to keep an eye on me. <laughs> yeah. I think his days of saying that are at an end. You really showed him what you can do. Still, I think I'd like to stay with you from now on. Er? Huh? Oh. Would I just get on your nerves? No, no, nothing like that. But what do you mean by stay with me? Just that we know each other so well, and we can practically read each other's minds. I think we make a good team, and I'd hate to break it up. Can't break up the team, you know. Oh, you mean like for Bracer business? Yeah, I was thinking you were going to tell me your big confession or something. What? Ah! Nothing. For, 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 forget I said anything. Estelle? What was that all... But boy, it sure is hot out today, huh? And there's nothing to beat hot weather like ice cream, huh? My treat, just like I promised. So you wait right here. Oh. I don't think there's an ice cream stand over that way. I wonder if she... Nah, there's no way. Y'all ready for this? My, but I do envy you, your youth sometimes. It's Professor Alba! Professor Alba? It's been a long time since we last met, hasn't it? So much has happened lately, but things are finally settling down again. People truly thrive the most in peaceful times. Oh, is something the matter? You look a bit pale. I would have thought you'd generally be in better spirits now that you've attained senior bracer status. Speaking of which, I truly must congratulate you on your success. So long as, of course, I'm not being too forward in doing so. Ever since we first met, you always made me really uncomfortable. I'm a little more used to you now, but I still get the shakes a little bit whenever you look at me. Or why that could be. Oh. And in all the cases we've dealt with, there have been people who just forget things. You're always there, investigating. No matter where we've gone, your timing's almost a little too good. Hmm. What really clued me in was Kurt's reaction. He lost his memories, too. He said he wasn't feeling so well when he was in the stands. You know, cheering for the home team and such. And you were right there with him. Professor Alba, was it you? Ha <laughs> ha. 
Uh-oh. Impressive. Even with your cognizance and recollection being puppeteered, you were still able to piece it all together. Indeed it was I. Ah. Uh-oh, face change. Allow me to clear away your confusion. Uh-oh. Things are getting serious now. Oh! You! You're... Haha. <laughs> so you finally remember me, do you? When your heart was in tatters, it was I who rebuilt it. I who restored it. It was I who poured a soul back into that empty vessel. You have the power to twist the minds and memories of men? The Seven Snake Apostles. The Anguis. You're one of them. Weissman. The Faceless. Da -da. Ha. I've not heard that name pass your lips in ages. Enforcer. Number 13. The Black Fang. Joshua Astray. Not Ashtray. Astray. Y you You were behind all of this. Which means that Lieutenant Lawrence has to be... It is as you surmise. I was kind enough not to erase your memories of him. I'm not surprised you were able to make the connection so quickly. Haha. <laughs> I'm sure he'd be pleased to know you were thinking of him. So, you... You're here to finish me off? Heh. <laughs> no. Nothing of the sort. The first phase of our plan went off without a hitch. Since I've a moment to spare, I simply thought I'd come to see you. First phase? The seal in the old ruins? The gate which blocks the path to the ring. Wrenching it open was but the first step of many. <laughs> and already, there exists no means of closing it again. I knew this wouldn't be the end of it. What the hell is the Shining Ring? And what is your little society after? If you really wish to know, why don't you rejoin? I'm certain that you'd be able to return to active duty in no time. You needn't look so glum. We can get you back into fighting form. Haha, <laughs> please spare me your withering looks. I do understand that you have a family now, whom you regard as important. You greatly admire your father, to say nothing of the girl you so adore. Even with him on our side, throwing those gifts away would be the actions of an idiot. <sighs> and so, I've come here to see you. I came to offer you true freedom from our association, as thanks for the integral role you so perfectly played. Which means that I must congratulate you, Joshua. You are already a free man. I am most grateful for the work that you've done over the past five years. What? Oh, don't be so boring. I was expecting a bit more cheer out of you at hearing such news. Hmm. Perhaps there's a flaw in the design of your emotions. I've been helping you? <laughs> what kind of bullshit are you expecting me to swallow? Oh, pardon me. I completely forgot to tell you. I never intended you to be an assassin, but rather a spy. What? The society abandoned you. We played on the pities of a noble-hearted man 
and it worked. You were given a loving home. And while you were there, our contacts would check in on you from time to time, and you'd tell them everything. We were particularly interested in your reports on the movements of the Bracer Guild, as well as your intel on one Cassius Bright. <laughs> but of course, you wouldn't remember having done things such as that. You were not yourself at the time. <laughs> Cassius Bright, S-ranked Bracer. He was the foremost impediment to the success of this plan. We felt certain he would be quick to act in order to stop any coup d'etat that should occur. But through a detailed analysis of his behavioral patterns, we finally devised a plan that would lead him out of the country and out of our way. The intel you've unknowingly been feeding us had been most useful indeed. No! And so, I must thank you again. The past five years have been of inestimable help. No! You're lying! You have to be lying! I... All that time, I spent with Estelle. <laughs> Why are you so sad? Has your feigned ignorance not earned you a beloved family, as well as a happy home? If you say nothing, they will never know. <sighs> However, it is the sort of thing that might weigh heavily on a fellow since your fellow members of the Bright Household are such good people. Perhaps a little too good for a monster such as yourself. However much you may model your behavior after a normal decent person, you are no such thing. You must surely have noticed your ability to reason through and execute a solution to a problem no matter the circumstances. Your physical strength and reflexes better than an entire squadron of normal soldiers. You are my greatest creation, my human weapon. That is who and what you truly are, the Black Fang. You have no place in the lives of normal people. You'll never be happy in their presence again. You can't be. When it becomes too much for you, we're always welcome to return to the Grand Master's Society of Soul. Back to Ouroboros. Da da! The very first mention of Ouroboros, officially. Wow, that just completely ripped, ripped the story in half. <laughs> Is this my punishment? My sister and and Lule. I. What do I do? I don't know how to face him after all that, but I've kept him waiting for way too long. It's getting late, too. I'm such an idiot. I need to learn to think before I open my mouth. I wonder if Joshua's figured me out. Gotta cool down. I feel like I'm stuck in perma blush mode. Ah, Estelle, I thought I might find you around here somewhere. 
Hi, Professor Alba. Fancy seeing you here. <laughs> Indeed. Of course, now he's back to his Professor Alba persona. I was actually just speaking with Joshua. Congratulations on your promotion to Senior Bracer status. <laughs> thanks. Hmm? Is something wrong? I don't know. Something just seems different about you. What's got you looking so cheerful? <laughs> okay, you got me. To tell the truth, I've made several major advances in my archaeological research. You might say that it's put me in a good mood. Hey, that's awesome! Oh, sorry. The ice cream's gonna melt, so I better get going. I'll see you later. Haha, <laughs> I see. Cassius Bright's daughter. I think she's going to be quite a lot of fun. That's one way of putting it. Hey, sorry it took so long. It was super crowded there, but I have returned with our valuable loot. Cool, thanks. Now we can eat like kings. Yeah. Um, so, about earlier... Yeah, I want to apologize for that. I didn't mean to be so vague. It just wasn't an appropriate time for confessions, you know? Confessions... Oh, sure. I didn't really mind so much. Well, when I gave it some more thought, it seemed kind of silly to try and rush things. We may be senior bracers now, but that just means that we have different work to focus on. We might have to really consider our future prospects. I might have to consider plugging in my phone before it dies. It's just the way it goes, dude. Can't do nothing about it. Right. If we get married, we'll have to think about raising children. Ach, I've got to stop getting so far ahead of myself. Well, it's evening already, so why don't we eat our ice cream on the way back? Everyone's probably waiting for us. <sighs> hey, Joshua. What is it? Did you have something you wanted to discuss about the future? N no. What would give you that idea? Come on, let's get back to the castle. Back to the castle. Hmm. What's wrong, Estelle? You've been completely on edge for a while now. Something on your mind? Y yeah. Hey, Shara. Did you think Joshua was acting weird at dinner? Eh. If anyone was acting weird, I'd say it was you. He was as calm as he ever is. Well, yeah, but... 
Aha. I see. I get it. Uh, get what? You can't keep secrets from me. I had a feeling about it, but I was wondering if you'd ever admit it to yourself. You're kind of falling for Joshua, aren't you? <sighs> you can tell? It's pretty obvious. Sorry, hon. But I'm guessing you haven't told him anything about this. N no. Joshua's always picking on me, telling me w w what a dope I am, calling me a spaghetti bender. Not that I should be criticizing anyone, I guess. Ugh, you're so naive. It's a wonder how you've lasted this long. You need to learn to look a little deeper. Big Sister is ready to begin your education in love, Estelle. I'm never asking you for advice again. I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. I don't mean to tease. But... You guys set out just when puberty was about to hit. It's only logical that you'd start picking up on feelings for each other. Uh, oh, y you think so? Traveling together just seems like such a petty reason for that kind of thing. I guess I've gotten a little more self-aware since we started all this. Ah, this isn't like me at all. <laughs> You're the proverbial flower that refuses to blossom. Every girl feels that way. Shara. I don't want to lecture you or talk about this with you if you're not ready. But if you are, then let's say we have ourselves some girl talk, hmm? Would it help if I told your fortune? Uh oh. Um, yeah, okay. I promise I'll listen to whatever you have to say. Okay. Alright, time for your lesson, my protege. Oh, Estelle, Big Sister is moved to tears. On second thought, never mind. But thank you. I do feel a little better. I'm gonna go see Joshua for a little bit. Oh? You're going to tell him. Not about that. I'm gonna tell him how to unlock Dave in Vigilante 8. He's been dying to know. There really does seem to be something weird going on with him. I want to see what that's about first. Ah. Well, you do seem to know him better than anyone else. I'm sure that everything will turn out just fine between you two. Maybe you could even have a nice, calm discussion with him and be open about what's on your mind. Maybe, but probably not. I... I don't think I'm quite that ready yet. Okay, I'll see you later. I'll see you later, buddy. Young love. Ah, they'll probably be fine. Probably. Or not. Either way. Huh? They're not here. Oh yeah, Dad's still in some meeting, I think. But where's Joshua? Uh-oh. Joshua? It's that awesome song. Ah. He's out playing somewhere, then. So basically, you... 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 you, you I can't talk. You just want to head out to the terrace. To bring everything to an end. Ba, 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 ba. Harmonica style. Kind of like that time Lanthard played the harmonica 
during a recording of Soul Blazer. That was a fun time. Hey, Estelle. Nice night, isn't it? Lancer just posted a video. Yeah. There's that song again. The abs the whereabouts of light, not the absence of light. Excuse me, moi. I've lost a lot. But the song and this harmonica have always been with me. I've been thinking about why I play it. Maybe it's a habit I should quit. You should quit like Vega Star, didn't you know? I think I want to tell you what I was doing before I met you. Oh boy, here we go. Joshua? Okay. This may take a while. Do you mind? Not at all. I'll listen to whatever you have to say. Thank you. Once upon a time, there lived a little boy all by himself. Ready for a tragic story? He was the timid sort, relying on the kindness of others without a single redeeming trait. But he had people he cared about with him, so he was happy. But one day, something happened that broke his heart. He forgot how to speak, to feel, even to eat. All he could do was play his harmonica. No matter how hard his caretaker tried, nothing helped his heart to mend, and he grew weaker by the day. One day, a wandering magician appeared before the boy. I will heal the boy's heart for you, he said. Provided, of course, I am compensated. And so, the boy was given over into the magician's care. As he attempted to piece the broken heart back together, the magician found that he could shape the boy's existence into anything he wished. And so, the boy's new heart became that of a murderer. That's no good. For two years, the boy killed every single day. Under cover of night, he murdered dozens of soldiers. He slit the throat of a national cabinet minister who was under heavily armed guard. Possibly Speaker Hartman. Sometimes he used explosives, which maimed and killed innocent bystanders. At some point, he became regarded as something more than a mere killer. He was known as the Black Fang, and the name struck fear into the hearts of men. One day, the magician gave the boy an assassination order. His target was a hero, a man who had protected his queen and nation from the threat of an invading northern country. Oh, we know who that is. He was a bracer, who held a special rank shared only by three others in the entire land. But the target was too strong, he was too high leveled. He defeated the boy with all the ease of a tiger swatting at a play playful cub. At that moment, some of the magician's servants showed up. Since the boy's face had been seen, he was now a loose end to be tied up. But someone came to his aid and drove the attackers away. It was, of course, the man he had come to kill. And so, the boy... The boy was taken to the man's house where he met a young girl. That's where everything started. He lived there for five years, always feeling like he was lost in some wonderful dream. 
In the real world, he would never be allowed to have such dreams. But all dreams must end at some point. The time was drawing near when reality could be avoided no longer. And that's the end of my story. Thank you for being patient with me and listening. Um, <laughs> was all that real? Every syllable. My heart is broken. My hands will always be stained with blood. I failed in the assassination of your father. I've been betraying you for a long time. But the boy can't be saved from his real purpose. His presence alone seems to bring disaster and misery. He's just... tainted. But the boy set out on a journey. In hopes that he may keep his misfortunes from the one he holds dear. He will find and stop the foul magician who created the life he has led. What? That's the last remnant of my human heart. I won't be needing it anymore. But I want you to take it. It's hardly an adequate way to thank you for the last five years. Yet, I can't think of anything better. Stop it. What? I said stop it! Stop talking about it like it's a dream. You make it sound like nothing that's happened was even real to you. What difference does the past make? Your heart is broken? What does that even mean? Estelle... Look at me! Look into my eyes! They've always seen that boy, in good times and bad. No matter how much the boy was hurting, I always saw how hard he'd been, he'd keep holding on. Joshua, I love you! You can't just leave me on my own. My feelings won't just go away when you do. I won't let you. Estelle. Huh? Oh. J Joshua. What was that? It's so bitter. Portrait change. It's just a fast-acting sedative. Don't worry. There are no side effects. Oh. Oh. Why? Why did you... My Estelle, you shine like the sun. My time with you was the happiest and the most painful I've ever known. Just as the brightest light casts the darkest shadow. If you stayed with me, You'd find out just how disgusting my true nature is. Sometimes, I think it would have been better if we'd never met. No! But this time is different. I'm grateful that you came to see me. I hate that I have to run from a girl who's so important to me. But it's all I can do. But I want you to know that I'll always be thinking of Joshua. Joshua. Thank you. For everything. You had me from the first moment I met you. I've always loved you. Goodbye, Estelle. The Legend of Heroes. 
That is one of the best cliffhanger endings of all time right there. And of course the second game is where uh, the real story begins. There was a wheat field, clearly that was in Nebraska. We get some nice photos here. It's like a scrapbook. Nah. <laughs> Still the doesn't look too happy in that photo. I think the Huskers have just lost. They're at Sunday school! And they're training. John Sears? Prescott? That guy's just a jerk, as far as I'm concerned. Hate that guy. Harmonica! Legend of Heroes, Trails in the Sky. Good times. Fen. We get a Fen! First chapter. Regarding clear data, after saving clear data, you may load it from the title screen to begin a second playthrough with various statistics carried over. Bother with such shenanigans, we'll save a second clear data since they already have one. So, you know, that's how that goes. Yes, I am. Falcom presents. The skies show no mercy. They sure don't. They see and engulf all. And the gears of fate continue to turn. Love this song, by the way. Trails in the Sky. The second chapter. Leaving his harmonica with a spell, Joshua vanishes into the fading light. Estelle sets out on a new journey to bring him home. But the faint tolling of a distant bell indicates the dawn of a new era. A time of conspiracy and c calamity. More trials await the men and women of Liberal Kingdom. New journeys. Sp 
special characters. Look at that, man. Peculiar artifacts. One epic adventure. Reaching, grasping for that familiar melody. Marching ever onward. Plotting out the trails of destiny once more. Through the tank! The Legend of Heroes, Trails in the Sky. Coming soon to a theater near you. Alright, so there you go. So, next time we will be starting the second game. So, thanks everyone for stopping by! And I shall see you all next time. That's it.